Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I am working on advent calendar projects for our autumn advent calendar. And you, if you have the calendar, have some of these cakes that are the three ply uh, Briggs and Little 100% wool yarn, right? I've dyed all of these in autumn colors. Um, I don't know if this is one of the colors you have. This is one that I grabbed quickly to do this video, but these are in your calendar. And if you're wondering what they're for, you can certainly hook with them. These are great hooking wools. And I do sell two ply and three ply Briggs and Little because in my opinion, they're the best. But you can also crochet with them. So I wanted to do a project that was a little bit different in case you're interested in trying something different. I love to do crocheted projects. In fact, in my first book, I crocheted. One of the chapters is about crocheting a full-size rug out of my kids' uh, sort of defunct summer tie-dye t-shirts. So I do a lot of hooking with t-shirt material and stuff like that, but also with yarn. And in this case, I'd like to create a nice, uh, loose-looking uh, autumn-colored runner for like the Thanksgiving table, something like that. So let's see how that is done. I'm going to be executing a series of closed granny squares. If you don't crochet, this could be interesting for you. Give it a try. Let's see how this is done. Okay, so I am using my yarn. I've got my Susan Bates hook. This is an 18, so this is absurdly large, but I want to show you how the stitches look very, very large, extra large, supersize you, because I, I don't want there to be any question about what my hands are doing or what we're forming, uh, because it's confusing enough when you're learning something new, right? So very, very large. The larger your hook is, the more loose and filigree your piece will come out. We're making a closed granny square. If you're using a smaller hook, you can, but it'll, the smaller the hook, the more dense and small the piece will be. Probably the ideal hook for this is something like a 10, but I'm using the 18 so that we can really see what we're doing. To start anything crochet, you take your tail like this and fold it over just like this, right? just like that. And then you put the yarn through the hole, pull it through, and tug at the ends like this. And that's the knot that starts you off with all things crochet. Let's look at that again. About an inch in, don't get your ruler out, it's not that kind of a project, right? You just fold over it like that, and then feed the yarn back through. You can pull at it a little bit feed your hook through, and make sure you have a tail that's at least an inch, right? The tail is aggravating and annoying, but we have to deal with it for the moment until it disappears into our work, and you'll see how that works. This is the tail, this is the working yarn, right? So the first thing I need to do, and I, again, I don't wanna make this too tight, I want to chain four. Chaining means wrapping the yarn around, pulling it through the hole. Wrapping the yarn around, and pulling it through the hole. If you're able to grab the tail with your other fingers, right, on your non-dominant hand, then it helps the thing spring out a little bit so you can see better. Wrap and through the hole, wrap and through the hole. So can you see here how I have a chain of four? This is our knot, right? This right here is the knot. One, two, three, four. We don't count the one that the hook is through right now. We have four in a chain. So, so far so good. And what I want to do is turn the chain into a circle. So I'm going to want to go into the first crochet hole, the first chain, wrap, I'm using my crochet ring here. I'm gonna take it out so it's a little bit easier. I'm gonna wrap the yarn around and I'm gonna pull it through. And I've just connected the two ends of my chain. You see that? You see how it's now a circle and it's connected? And here's my finger coming through the circle. This is the base for what we're gonna do. This is the center of the granny square. Now I'm gonna do something that's a little bit advanced because you can see how I've got my working strand and my, and my tail. The tail is very annoying. This is a good time to incorporate the tail into the piece, right? Instead of dealing with two strands, I'm actually gonna treat it as one strand. I'm going to wrap around both, treating it as one, bring it through, that's one chain. I'm actually gonna make three chains here. One, wrap through the chain. It's fiddly when you've got your tail on there, but believe me, it's worth it. See, it's already about to disappear and leave us alone. And number three, through the chain. So I have my central ring here, 
and now I have chained up three. Now I am going to want to do three double crochets into the center of the hole, and they look like this. Right, you're gonna see me do a bunch of them because this is one of the tricky and common stitches. Yarn over into the hole, in the back of the hole, thread it with the yarn again. Right, see it's in the back of the hole, bring it through. Now I have three strands on my hook, yarn over, come through only two, that leaves two, yarn over, and come through the last two. My tail's still playing us right there. I'm going to tuck it through here just for fun. Since you are probably a rug hooker, you know that uh, it's easy to do sneaky stuff like that. Better to do it at the beginning. That was one double crochet. Let's do that. We're doing three. We, we need two more. Another double crochet. Yarn over into the hole, into the back. I'm threading it over the hook, coming through, giving us three. Yarn over, only two. Yarn over, only two. Right, two and two. Now, this is my initial chain, and this is my first double crochet, my second double crochet. Let's go to one more. Yarn over into the hole, thread it, give it some more from behind, right? Thread over, come up, that gives us three. Yarn over, only two, come through two, yarn over, and then come through the last two. That gives us three double crochets. Let's look at our work. This is the chain that got us here. This is the central hole. I've got one, two, three double crochets. And look on the top, I have one, two, three double crochets, and then our chain. Now what I need, this is one quarter of our square, I need a corner. So for a corner, I'm gonna chain two. One, yarn over, two. And I wanna put our next set of three double crochets right here. So let's do this again together, yarn over, in through the hole, feet in the back, that gives us three, yarn over, come through two, yarn over, come through two, that's one double crochet, yarn over, into the hole, feet in the back, that gives us three, yarn over, come through two, yarn over, come through two, one more, yarn over, into the hole, feet in the back, bring through, that gives us three, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, what do we have now? We have our center, we have our first set of three crochets, we've got our corner, our second set of three double crochets, and another corner, that's chain one, chain two, always two chains in the corner. Now we need, we've got one, two, we need another set of double crochets up here. Over, into the hole, feet in the back, bring up three, over, go through two, over, two. One double crochet. I'm gonna do the next two. And you work on yours. Here's number three. Pause me if you need to pause me. And let's look again. Well, it's starting to look like a square. I've got one set here, a corner, one set here, a corner, one set here. Looks like I need another corner. Chain one, chain two. And I'm gonna need another set of double crochets here. Our last set, because we've got one, two, three. This is our chain that got us to the first set of double crochets, right? We're gonna use this, but we need one more set of double crochets here. After I have my corner, I'm gonna put in my last three double crochets. And as you go along, you get more and more used to handling it. You get more and more used to pushing and pulling where you need to, making little adjustments. Uh, you'll figure it all out. It's just practice, right? That was my third double crochet. Now, we have got one, two, three, four, but we need to create a nice corner here. Here's our double crochets here, the first ones we did, and here is our, this part is fiddly, I'm going to warn you, here is the chain that brought us there with the tail in there. I am going to want to, do you see, this is the, these are the three double crochets, one, two, three, this is the chain, right? And the chain is disappearing under it because I've been working over the chain. You see how this is the first stitch that isn't one of the three double crochets? You see that? One, two, three. This is 
this is the chain stitch I want, the last chain before we get to the top of the double crochet. I want to connect here. So I need to first put in my corner, one double crochet, two double crochet, and I want to connect to the existing square here, the top of the chain. I want both strands of the chain. Do you see that? Right. The chain has two strands on top. I don't want to go through one. If you can, nothing really bad will happen. But we'll be stronger if we go through two. You see how I did that? And now I'm going to catch the yarn from behind, bring it under the chain, and bring it through the hoop. And now see what I've got. One, two, three, four. My tail is still playing me. Look at this little thing. We'll hide him later. I've got four corners and I've got four sides. I want to do the next layer. And because this is a closed crochet square, um, I'm going to be going into all the stitches. You see what I mean uh, as we go along. But I need some height. So I'm going up two. And I'm going up two so I have more height. And now I am going to yarn over. I'm going to double crochet into this first stitch. Right? What other stitch could there be? This is real obvious that this is my next stitch. I'm going to want to stitch into this stitch next. And I put my yarn over. I'm going under both again. Catch the yarn in the back. Bring it up. This should look familiar. There's three. Yarn over. Go through two. Sorry about that. Yarn over. Go through two. Now let's just pause here because it looks like I only have two, one stitch left before I hit the corner. Right? I have one stitch here and then by the time I get here I'm in the corner. There's three stitches here. I'm going to need three stitches. Well the chain up is acting as the first stitch. So ch this chain up is acting as the first. This is number two. This is number three. We want three double crochets on top of these double crochets. Yarn over under the two stitches at the top of the last double crochet. Catch your yarn from behind. Bring it up. That gives us three. Yarn over. Come through two. Yarn over. Come through two. Well, look at that. We have three stitches right on top, which is just what we wanted. Now we have the corner. We don't want to make a corner this time. We want to close the stitches. So I'm going to do two double crochets into the corner hole. Right? It's very obvious. We're not fooling with this anymore. That's served its purpose and that's done. This is my corner. Two double crochets into the corner hole. Here we go. Yarn over into the corner. Pull from behind. Bring up three. Yarn over. Come through two. Yarn over. Come through two. That's one. We want two. Yarn over into the corner hole. Grab from behind. That gives us three. Yarn over, come through two, yarn over, come through two. Now, I want to make a corner now. So I need two double crochets. And I have to complete this side, so I need two stitches into the same corner hole. You'll see what I mean. Two double uh, stitches here, two double crochets. Yarn over into the hole, grab from behind. That gives us three, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. I know you must have to pause this if you're a beginner. Yarn over into the hole, pull from behind. That gives us three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now, let's look again. So, what did that do? These are our first two stitches into the corner hole. Then we made a new corner hole for the next round. And these are our second two stitches into the corner hole. Looks like we're in good shape. Now we need to do a double crochet into here, into here, and then I'm going to do two into here, two chain, and two more. Watch me as I go through this. Now we need two chains, right? Because we need to keep this a corner. One, two. Two more double crochets into the corner. And look at this. It's really coming along. Here's our center. Here's our original corners. We created two new corners. We can stop whenever we want. Well, not mid-square, but you can stop after this round if you want. Let's complete the square together and then assess. I'm going to continue. When I have a stitch here, like I do, one, two, I'm going to go into the tops of them each time with my double crochet. When I come to the corner, I'm doing two double crochet, two chain, 
two double crochet. And then I'll be looking at the next stitches to put double crochets into the top of. Now I'm back at this corner here. Now are you noticing that I'm only doing two double crochets into the prior tier of double crochets? Well, it's because there's four stitches on the corner, right? So that's making up the extra stitches on the sides. You'll see as the pattern grows, you only need to put stitches where there is a place to put stitches. Now I am at the corner and I'm gonna to wanna to do my corner thing one more time. So that means two double crochets into the corner. and two chains and two double crochets. Now, this is where I'm at. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? You've got your core, I hope it does, and if not, you just pull it out and try again, right? You, got, you have to practice. You can't expect things to be right out of the gate, right? They just Life isn't like that, is it? So our center hole, and we've got our corners. Now we've got our new corners made, and we're in the same predicament we, we were down here on the last tier. We need to connect, right? So I have to look at where I want to connect to. You see, we're not so tight now because we've worked up a bit. This is my chain of two coming up get started my crochet series. So I want to hook, you know, I don't want to hook under here because that will look ugly. I want to hook under the first attached chain. You see this right here? You see how this is different than this? I want to come under here, always hook both, grab from the back, pull through, and pull through. And look what I've got. Now if I want a bunch of small little squares, lots of different colors, or I want to use a bunch of scraps, I can I can stop here. I'm going to do one more tier and then I'm going to stop. So I'll speed up a little bit for this and you can watch me do one more tier around. I'm going to start with the chain up two and I'm going to follow the same formula. Maybe I'll talk you through it. Yarn over and right here I can see all of the stitches I need to crochet into the top of. One, two, three, and then I'm gonna to come to my corner. So yarn over, double crochet, yarn over, double crochet, yarn over, last one right here, you see, cause then I'm at the corner, double crochet, and now I'm gonna to wanna to do two double crochets into the corner. And then I'm gonna to want to chain two, one, two. And I wanna do two more double crochets into the corner, one and two. And let's take stock. These are the stitches I the, the stitches that are present I want to crochet into because this is a closed granny square, meaning it's not all open and loose like traditional granny squares. It's more closed, right? There's more material showing. There's more stitches present. I've got one, two, three, four, five before I hit the corner. So come with me here. One. two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna double crochet into the corner twice and chain two and two more double crochets. Now why do the stitches change numbers as this thing evolves? This is my second double crochet. Well, it's because it's getting larger and the stitches are, are changing. Oops, hang on, hang on. Don't worry, it's not like knitting. It's not gonna fall apart in my hand. That was two double crochets, chain two. It is tricky working with a very large hook, I have to say. So if you go for a smaller hook, um, it'd be, be much better off. An 18 is absolutely absurd. 
but it shows you kind of an exaggerated um, illustration of what we're doing. You can see I came around that corner there and now I've got my one, two, three, four, five, and then I hit the next corner. So I'm double crocheting into the top of all of those. The more rounds you do, the uh, longer your runs will be along the tops, right? It won't be five anymore. The number will grow up and up and up according to how large your square gets, right? It's that many more stitches every time. It gets larger and larger and larger. Um, and so your numbers will change. But the thing that you have to keep embedded in your head is if there is a stitch and not a hole, if there is a stitch, there has to be a double crochet in the stitch, right? So if it's there, you put a double crochet in it. If you've made a boo-boo, now two double crochets, two chains, two double crochets in the corner. If you did a boo-boo, you have to think about that and we can work backward from that because um, you can just pull it out, right? Because once you get going with this, you can do a square in a few minutes. That's my two in the corner, two chains, two more into the corner, same corner, same hole, right? Because without the corners, without having those extra chain stitches in the corners, there's no room for the stitches to go. There's no place for them. It would change the shape of your square. One, two, three, four, five. One more run and then the corner. And then we're gonna meet back up here. So let's do this. One, two, now, I think I'm gonna show you something uh, interesting just because we're doing so well, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to complete this, but let's talk about what if you wanted to do a different look, which maybe you do, this is advanced. What if I wanted to just catch the back loop, right? Watch this, this is just a variation, then I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna double crochet just into the back half of the loop. Do you see what I'm doing? Instead of catching it underneath, I'm just going into the back half of the loop, doing the same stitch what happens then? You might actually like this look better. Let me show you. You're probably going to be able to see. And then, like I say, I'm going to pull it out and do it uh, in keeping with our pattern. But let me show you what this looks like. Let's see. Oops, happened again. Let's see if you can see the difference here. So can you tell? It's hard to tell, but can you tell on these last stitches that there's a line showing forward? Can you see that line in the front? It's different than here, right, where there's just more stitches. Here, it's more pronounced. You can see a line because these stitches are set back a little bit. This line is showing because I only, I only stitched into the back half of the loop, whereas this is just kind of a party of all kinds of loops and stitches. You don't see that line. But here, very pronounced, right? You see it from here, 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 and here, right? That's what happens. It just looks a little bit different if you only take the back half of the loop, right? So that's kind of interesting. It gives it a little bit more depth, but I'm gonna go back to the last loop. See, I can tell that this is the last loop I did with both because it really looks different. Hopefully that carries on film too. But let's continue the way we started with hooking both loops. I just wanted to give you that uh, variation in case it's interesting for you to do some of them in a different way, or you wanna you know, make these little changes here and there. This is the last one in the series. And then I hit my corner again, and I'm going to do two. I'm sure my yarn is flowing there. That's one and a two. Oop. And I'm going to want to chain. Wait a minute. I'm going to want to chain two into the corner. Oh boy, it's happening a lot. Yeah, I can't recommend these big um, hooks. They are really clunky and clumsy. That was my two chains in the corner, and then I'm gonna conclude with my two double crochets into the same corner, closing that corner, and then let's take stock. Right, I can see that I have one stitch here that I need to fill, right, just one. Not this one, right, because that already has something going through it. You can see that there's one stitch that's available. If there's a stitch, you go into it with a double crochet. That is the nature of a closed granny square. So now I'm here, right? I'm not going to go into this hole because there's something in that hole. That means that coming out of this stitch is my chain of two to my first series. It's not threes anymore, but my first series of granny squares on the top. 
So what do I need to do? I need to connect. And again, I'm not going to connect through the hole because that'll look weird and ugly. I want to connect to the first stitch that's attached. It's this one. Right? So I come through here, yarn over, come through, both. And that leaves us here. And then I take my scissors, I cut like an inch or two, and pull it a little bit tighter, yarn over and through. And that is it. Right, and then later on I can worry about how to hide this guy, right? He can hide in any manner of way. You can bring your needle in and out or whatever, come into the back and hide the tail back there. But at the end of the day, look what we did. We have our four corners here. We have our center. You can see the diagonals heading out to the corners. Now you can see how using different colors of yarn, similar weights of yarn, variegated, variegated colors, right? The color changing colors. I can then connect these stitch to stitch. I can do another video on that if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested. But I could keep going doing the same formula as large as I want it. It could be as big as I want it. I kind of like this. I'm, I'm crocheting my own hairs into there. That's pretty gross. Um, you can see what your yarn situation is. You can also change color partway through. There's no problem with a two colored square. That's kind of exciting, right? But this for me was the base, right? The little, um, um, the core of it was the circle, the round with the four sides coming off of it. And then we just did one round, two rounds, right? I could do three, four, 10, 12, 20. I could do as much as I wanted, but then each square becomes that much longer to execute because it's a lot of stitches, as you could see. Comes out very, very pretty on both sides. I can figure out how I want to hide this guy later, but comes out just like this. And if you connect these together at the sides, you'll find when you when you line them up side by side, pretend these are two different squares, right? You put the You put the corners together and then you would be attaching them with yarn just through the corresponding stitches, just one to connect, just one to connect. And it's the outer one to connect, right? See, these are the stitches. You see how these are the little faces of them? One, two, one, two. Just catch the outer one when you connect like that. And side by side, you can line them up. You also know if you made any mistakes, if there aren't exactly the same number of stitches heading to the two edges. You connect them like that in whatever configuration you want, a rectangle, a giant rug, a table runner, like what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. But all in, this is maybe a video, if you're a total beginner, you want to watch again and again, maybe a little bit smaller with this. If you have the Briggs and Little yarn, if you have the same three ply yarn from the Autumn Advent calendar, maybe go with something like um, maybe a 10 or a 12 hook, try that. Unless you really like this big filigree looking thing, then this is an 18 hook, kind of crazy but it does make it look pretty and lacy, doesn't it? Maybe 10 is a little bit small for a beginner. But if you like if you like this look, it's an 18. It's my Susan Bates hook. Um, this is a smaller hook, for example. This is a 10. So it'll work like this, but it'll be a lot denser. And I have to say, sometimes the larger hook plays you if you're a beginner, because it's lots of stitches and it's very dull and it can get caught in a lot of places because it's so big. Um, whereas this one's a little bit easier to use, but it's much harder to see your stitches when you're a beginner. It's much harder because they're so much smaller. They're almost half the size. So you decide what's right for you. You could this. I did it in a 10 before in a past video. This time I used an 18. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But it's a fun project to work on. And if this isn't exciting, then you can just go ahead and take your Briggs and Little Yarn and rug hook with it or punch needle with it. Um, but if you're up for something different, this is a fun thing to try. I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking.